Hi class, welcome to the module covering temperature and compost parameters. Uh, this is a very important component of your compost pile because we want to kill pathogens, we want to kill weed seeds, and we want a nice finished product. So Chris has already talked about moisture, and Joe has already covered a little bit about how turning increases the temperature of the pile. Let's focus primarily on temperature and see what happens in that pile as we adjust things. Now you've seen this graph before, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but you can see how the temperature increases during the active phase of composting and then slopes off and into the curing phase. So we're gonna discuss some of the reasons why this happens and what you can do to speed things along and get things to heat up. First of all, temperature is such an important part of composting and something that you should be doing on a regular basis um, that everyone should have a compost thermometer. Uh, they're really affordable. You can spend as little as 15 bucks I've seen at the garden center all the way up to over $300 for some of these, but an average price is about 20 to 30 bucks. And compost thermometers come in a wide range of stem lengths. Uh, some of the cheaper ones are pretty short, eight to 12 inches. You can get some up to four feet long. And that stem is what you plug into the compost pile into the center where the heat action is taking place. And that's where you take your temperature reading. So invest in one of these. You can also use it to take the temperature of your soil in your gardens in the springtime, which helps you determine when to plant your crops or your vegetables. So it's a good investment to make if you're a gardener. Some qualities of a good compost thermometer. All compost thermometers are not created equally. These are some things to look for. Appropriate length to reach the center of your compost pile. So if you have a giant pile taller than me, you might need something with a four foot stem on it. If you have just a little pile like a home gardener would have, maybe that eight to 12 inch long stem would be right for you. You wanna get down into the center of the pile and take your reading from there. You want something that's clear and easy to read. So get one with a dial on it that you can understand. Um, some of them are quite complicated and some of them are just a basic, you know, almost like a kitchen thermometer. So very easy to read. You wanna make sure they're made of stainless steel or another non-rusting material because as Chris said, that pile is gonna be moist and you want your equipment to last a long time. So if you can, go for the stainless steel. You want a temperature range from zero to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that should cover just about the whole range of your temperature in your compost pile Really, they don't get much higher than 175, 180 in really extreme cases, but get one that reads up to 200. Make sure that the display is hermetically sealed. That keeps moisture from entering into it, into the dial, so that it doesn't fog up and you can read it. Uh, that's very important. You don't wanna have fog inside there that you can't wipe off, so you can't see where your dial is. And you wanna include a warranty. Uh, that's not required, but it's a big plus. A lot of these compost thermometer manufacturers do insure or have a warranty for the lifetime of their product. So if it breaks, the stem falls off, that seal with the dial gets broken and it fogs up on the inside, you can get a replacement. A little bit about how to use your compost thermometer. Here's some good pictures about um, how to use it. You see how it's stuck all the way into the pile and that dial's kind of resting on the surface of the compost pile. You do wanna insert it carefully in case you have big chunks in there. You don't wanna snap the stem of your compost uh, thermometer and you wanna reach into the center of the pile with it. Some of them have depth marks on the stem so you can actually see how far you've pushed it in. Uh, those are really nice. And try not to use the gauge as a handle when inserting it. So really hold it by the base of that stem and gently put it into the pile. You wanna leave it in place for at least one minute. That ensures that you get an accurate, good temperature reading from the center of the pile. It gives it plenty of time to adjust and stabilize. You wanna make sure you record the temperature. Now it might be helpful to have a sheet of notebook paper in your garden shed, or if you have a garden journal of some kind, just jot down the temperature over time, you will be able to see where your compost pile is at in the composting process. And it's a good idea to take these measurements daily, just as part of your normal gardening routine. There's some good reasons for that. The temperature readings that you're taking on a daily basis will tell you where in this composting process your pile is. That's that graph again, that's gonna keep coming up. If things are going normally, you should see the curve going through these four phases. 
When first assembled and after turning, that's when we see that active phase taking place and the temperature is going to keep increasing. It's going to get into the 113 range. Uh, that's where the mesophilic stage starts. So that's why we keep track, especially if you're starting a new pile, you want to make sure you've got enough moisture, the particle sizes are right. If everything's right, the temperature should do this increase as you bring that pile together or after you turn it. Next, the pile will enter phase two and the temperature will continue to rise and it should stabilize somewhere between 130 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the B on the graph. When it begins to drop, again, that's that down slope of this graph. Here you can see that happens over and over over time each time you turn the pile. I really like this image because it shows how that process takes place. When you notice your temperature does begin to drop when you take those daily readings, it might be time to turn it. It might be time to do a moisture test like Chris showed you how to do, just to kind of get things jump started again. Turning and re-aerating the pile will send it back through the phases one and two, and where it should be for another rise in temperature. And you can see how the temperature increases a little bit, or decreases a little bit each time it's turned until you have a finished product. Finally, when turning the pile no longer leads to a temperature rise, that means every time you flip it, you're not really seeing that dial on your temperature gauge increase at all. Uh, that's when you know it's pretty much done <laughs> and it will pass through the second mesophilic phase. That's the C and four, which is maturation in that curing process taking place. That's when you know you're almost done and you almost have compost you're ready to use. So very important questions here. The temperature is going to tell you and give you answers to this primary question, are the pathogens and weed seeds dead? We get this question all the time from home gardeners and home composters who might pull weeds in their garden or in their yard and add them to their pile, but they're worried that if it doesn't get quite hot enough, those weed seeds will still be viable. Or if they've added diseased plant material to the pile, they're worried about that pathogen spreading back into their garden plants if they apply that compost as a fertilizer or as a soil amendment in their gardens. So to kill those things, to kill the pathogens and the weed seeds, that temperature needs to be between 131 and 170 degrees Fahrenheit for three days. Now you won't know if that's happening unless you're taking those daily temperature readings, right? So it's important to jot those readings down in a notebook so you know for sure that your compost has been completely sterilized essentially of those weed seeds and pathogens. So three days, and aim for a middle temperature of about 155 degrees Fahrenheit. That's just a nice rule to follow. Now, your beneficials in there, you don't want to kill them off because remember, compost is alive and those beneficial microbes, microorganisms, those are great in your garden. You don't want to completely sterilize the pile to the point where those guys die. So you want to make sure they're still alive and kicking. Keep the temperature below 175 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure that they're healthy and the populations don't die off. Turning helps drop the temperature if it gets too high. Believe it or not, if your pile is getting up into that red zone of 170, 175 degrees Fahrenheit, go ahead and break that pile up a little to bring the temperature down and then rebuild your pile later. This is a really good troubleshooting chart. Um, we've actually provided troubleshooting your compost pile in the additional resources section on the homepage of the course. Uh, this gets pulled right from that. And if your pile is not heating up, there are several problems that could be attributed to that. The pile might be too small. So especially if you're just starting out with a small amount of material, it might not be enough material or bulk mass to heat up in the proper way to get the compost pile started. So the solution, make the pile larger, drive around, pick up those bags of leaves and grass clippings your neighbors put on the curb, start saving your junk mail, ask your neighbors for their kitchen scraps. Just get some more material into that pile. The pile might be too dry. Now Chris mentioned that. The composting system will not work if there's no moisture in it, so you might have to add some water next time you turn the pile or the pile has too little nitrogen. So if you don't have a lot of green grass clippings or kitchen scraps or other green material, nitrogen rich material, you need to add some more. 
If you have any questions about any of this, please post on the Facebook discussion group. We are checking it daily. And if you have pictures of your compost pile, we sure would love to see them. So start posting on that group.